Hello, in this tutorial I'll show you guys how to retouch your outdoor images in Photoshop. So basically for this tutorial I'll show you guys how you can simply retouch your outdoor images and the do's and don'ts for retouching and color grading your outdoor images in Photoshop. So I already processed this raw file and you can see I, it was like this and I took it to the, looking like this. So you can say before and after. So let me sh first show you guys what I did for this image. So basically, uh, since I shoot with a uh, Canon, it usually adds that kind of tint to the image. So I simply decided to remove that kind of magenta tint from the image by moving this slider towards the green si slider. And this is what I managed to achieve. Then I pumped up the exposure of the image because the image was slightly looking a little bit underexposed. So let's see what I did basically. So this was the exposure initially before and this is what I did. So I actually pumped up the contrast to around 8. Then the next thing I did, I pulled down the highlights. So let's see before. You can see that my highlights were really blown out. But since I shoot in RAW, I managed to pull them down and regain back the information in the highlight area. Then for the shadows, I simply had to turn them up. So let's see what I had before. So since I had more exposure onto the model, I had to push up my shadows. So I'm just going to undo that. So to around, let me just put this down to around 53. Then I pull down my white slightly to around negative 6. And my blacks to around 10 to add that slight bit of contrast. Then I added a little bit of vibrance. And as you can see in the before, the pants were somehow kind of uh, purple-ish. So what I did, I simply came to the hues. So hues I came and targeted as uh, the blues. And I simply moved this to around negative 33. So... Let's see what I did. You can see the before and after right now. Then I simply turned out up my greens towards uh, the aquas because I wanted the greens to pop a little bit more. The next thing I did, I came to the yellows and see, since I wanted the model to really pop out in this image and really stand out, I simply had to remove the yellows from the highlights of this image. Then the luminance of the greens, I wanted the greens to pop even more. That's why I put the greens all the way up. Remember, luminance is more of lightness or darkness of a given color. So I wanted to brighten up the greens of this image. That's why I put up my greens to around 82. So basically, that is what I did to achieve the image to looking like this. So the next thing I did was I simply want to whiten the eyes because I don't want to come back into... The camera filter after I've done the skin retouching on this model so just going to zoom in and you can see I already did as eye whitening job to this image so let's say before and after so basically I just got my adjustment brush tool and what I did these are settings I used to whiten the eyes of the model so I put the temperature down to negative 28 to eliminate the yellows from the white area of the eye. Then I pulled up the tint to eliminate the greens towards the magenta side. Then since I wanted the eyes to pop, what I did, I simply pulled the highlights to around 4 and the whites to 4. Then the rest of the colors, those random colors that we usually have in the white area of the eye, I eliminated them by simply moving the saturation to around negative 74 so you're going to open this image into photoshop to do the skin retouching and the blemish removal and the final color grading process and later on looking for the best way to save this image so that we can have a very sharp image and an image that is not going to be able to change color after we have been able to uh, save it or upload it on different social media so don't mind about my desktop this is what it looks like so here we are in the magical world of photoshop so the very first thing i would love to do is coming and cropping this image so i'm just going to crop this image in a ratio of 45 because usually i post my my images on instagram 
So I'm just going to move this and crop uh, this image even more so that I can have most emphasis on the model and get rid of this softbox. So I'm going to hit enter just like that. And for the remaining part of the softbox, I could simply come and get my spot healing brush tool and increase on the size and start painting over that soft box and it's going to really do a pretty nice job and if at all it doesn't do a nice one we can we can look for another better way to eliminate that so let's just do this it is a rough thing for this tutorial and i think it is replacing or filling up those areas quite well so when we are done filling up that the next thing we want to do is doing the skin retouching to this model so what i usually do and i would recommend you guys to purchase or download my actions because i'm going to be using the actions to speed up the retouching process for this particular image so for those interested in buying my skin tone lats and color grading lats for skin tones i'm going to put the link in the description and those interested in my retouching essentials pack i'm going to also put for you that link in the description so that you can download and purchase these some are at on a discount and others are not discounted so you can choose whichever works best for you so i'm just going to come to my actions and i'm going to come to my retouching essentials pack and since this is a 16-bit image i'm simply going to select 16-bit and simply play my 16-bit action so when it reaches this step, it is automatically going to stop. Then I have to zoom into the first area. So I want to blur out or remove or move this radius up to a point when I'm losing out on the details on the skin area. That is the first to be precise. So just going to left click and move and drag up to a point when I'm losing out on the details in the first area. And I think. At around 5, I've lost out on the details in the skin area. So I'm simply going to hit OK. So depending on the image, the radius you choose is supposed to be depending on the details you have in the skin on, and maybe the kind of resolution of your images. So you shouldn't cramp this radius. So I'm just going to close this. So next thing I want to do, for my full body images, I don't prefer to use a black and white layer because we have limited detail to work with when you're using the mixer brush tool. So I'm going to simply turn off the black and white layer and make sure that I'm selected on the low frequency layer and simply come to the brushes and select, right click and select my mixer brush tool. So in order for this mixer brush tool to work best for me, I simply have to set it up. So Make sure it is a clean brush and we have two options. Select the second option because as we are trying to blend or even out the skin area, we don't want to drag color from one area to another. That's why we have selected the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke. So a wetness, I prefer to use a wetness of 9. Load 75, mix 90, flow at 100. So I always make sure I sample all layers is not checked or marked because I only want to deal with the low frequency layer that contains the colors or skin tones. And for full body images, I uh, allowed it is okay to zoom all the way in until you feel like you have a nice zoom in ratio and simply hold down the left click button. And how we blend these skin tones, you make sure you blend the mid tones alone, the highlights alone, and the shadows alone. And that area where the skin tones are trying to transition like right here just make sure you blend that border so that you have nice transitions within the skin tones of that particular area so i'm just going to start left clicking and start blending the skin tones just like that and come this highlight and i'm just going to blend that area and you can see that this is doing an amazing job while still retaining that nice detail in the skin area so reduce on the size depending on the area you're trying to blend or even out the skin tone so let's say before and after so far 
so before after before after i've just evened out those areas with just a few strokes of the mixer brush so i'm just going to come and blend those areas and usually for full body images when it comes to these highlights just just make sure you don't eliminate them because these highlights are going to be adding that kind of depth or dimension to your images so make sure you don't lose out on these nice and beautiful highlights that are created as a result of light striking the subject so make sure you don't eliminate them completely and when you want to blend them you can blend within this highlight alone and make sure you don't eliminate it because that is going to make your photo look flat so for full body images just do less of the mixing because no one is going to zoom the image up to uh, maybe this kind of ratio no one is going to do that unless they are not okay so let's just do that and try to even out the skin tones in the models first and i think uh, we are doing a pretty a uh, nice job so zoom out because that is too much and come and blend for example the neck area just like that you can see that we are having natural results while still retaining the original textures in the model skin so you can increase on the size of the mixer brush tool i forgot to mention by using the box brackets on the keyboard so when you use the box brackets they either decrease or increase on the size of your mixer brush tool and you have to use the mixer brush tool depending on the size or a particular area that you want to uh, blend or even out so just going to come and i blend that so usually i prefer to even out the skin tones before removing blemishes because what the mixer brush tool does it tends to flatten out most of the blemishes in the images and when it comes to the time for removing blemishes you have less work to do uh, with the blemish removal so ctrl minus is going to zoom out and ctrl plus is going to zoom in so after we have blended or evened out the skin tones let's see a before and after so before and after before after the next step is definitely going to be removing the blemishes so what i prefer to use is the clone stamp tool opacity and the flow at 100 percent align this checked and sampling should be on the current layer, layer so come and select the layer that contains the textures or the details in the skin area and make sure the sampling is on the current layer because you only want to sample details from the detail layer so make sure you select the high frequency layer and this time around you are allowed to zoom all the way in because you are dealing with skin imperfections or blemishes and hold down the left click button and alternate left click button to sample from a clean area and simply come and paint over the blemish to get rid of it so in this way you're going to be retaining most of the details in the skin area and the blemish removal is going to be at uh, the best because it is not going to be leaving the skin looking a little bit patchy so just do that for your image and you are going to be uh, good to go so let's just remove the blemishes before we can uh, finally uh, save this image or do the final bit of the color grading process for this very portrait so let's just clean up these tiny skin imperfections so you have to be careful while you're removing the blemishes because when you don't re remove these blemishes people have that habit like i said yeah the unusual people that love zooming in here and there they're going to start uh, judging you yeah as a careless re retoucher out there so make sure you don't give them a chance to do that and make sure you are perfect when you're trying to clean up or remove blemishes from your images and i think we are doing a nice job so zoom out and see the area you haven't worked on so we have another blemish right here and we have cleaned that so let's just come and 
eliminate uh, this blemish so i think we are done with the cleaning up and the blemish removal of all from this image so let's come and select the black and white layer and delete it because we no longer need it so the next thing or the next step that i usually do is darkening the blacks and adding that nice contrast to the image so what i do i come to selective color and i first come to the blacks and simply intensify on the blacks to make uh, the image even stand out even more then i add that kind of bluish tone to the image around negative to remember the opposite of uh yellow is blue so if at all i move this slider towards the negative of yellow i'll be adding blue to the image then i'm going to come and add a little bit of contrast so i prefer to use legacy I activate this option and this is going to make the image even pop a little bit more so i think to around two two is fine so let's see the before and after overall for this image so this is the image uh, before and after before after there is not much of a difference and the image really looks beautiful and amazing so the next thing is going to be saving this image the best way so that it doesn't change in color after it has been posted or shared on another device so the best way is you simply come to file and come to export and come to export as when you come to export as you're going to get back another window and in this window you have the preview so under the preview you have the image like you can see right now and the format i prefer jpeg because this is supported by most devices and most social media then make sure you sampling if at all you want a sharp image select by cubic sharper because this is going to add some slight bit of sharpening especially for screen so select that and make sure you, you select convert srgb and also embed the color profile so in this way you'll have embedded all the color grading process or steps that you applied over this very image and after doing that simply hit export and choose a folder where you'd love to export your image so for this case it is going to be my desktop and i'm going to simply hit save in order to save this image and after saving it is automatically going to close this window and we are done saving this image after doing skin retouching so this is how i retouch outdoor images in photoshop and i also color grade them and save them the best way possible so I don't run into those instances of having a color shift or a color change after I've been able to export or post them on social media. Ronix from Ronix Photography, thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more tutorials on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating.